Hi, my name is Ton de Jong. I'm from the University of Twente in the Netherlands. And in this short video from the GoLab project, I'd like to discuss with you the concept of inquiry-based science education. But before we go into that concept, let's first discuss the issue that leads to wanting to go into inquiry-based science education. The issue is, and as a science teacher you might, may, might easily recognize that, is that students often do not reach deep conceptual knowledge. If you ask them to calculate something, they're able to do so, but if you start to ask them questions that really are of a conceptual nature, that really ask for their knowledge, they often fail to answer these questions correctly. And the related issue is that students often lack motivation to learn science topics. We, from the GoLab project, then think that the solution to these two issues is to introduce engaged learning, which we will discuss in a minute, and to use technology to foster and enable the transition from traditional instruction to uh, engaged learning. But let's first see what is engaged learning. Um, I found somewhere this definition of engaged learning on the internet is not my own definition. I cannot trace it back, so it says that there is an unknown source, and this, def this definition says that engaged learning is any form of learning in which students are engaged in transforming or creating content or discussing or reflecting on knowledge and skills. This means that in engaged learning, students go beyond what is offered by you or by the book that they are reading and try to make their own meaning out of that. Or they do that in discussion with other students or reflecting their own on what they have been uh, reading and learning. There are different forms of engaged learning in education. And here you see a number of these forms that you'll recognize immediately. Things like problem-based learning, peer tutoring, self-directed learning, collaborative learning, etc. In this video, we will focus on one specific form, namely inquiry learning. And we will discuss a specific form of technology that goes with inquiry learning and that helps to make it uh, uh, appear and to, to, to realize that, which is online laboratories. Okay, let's look at the definition of inquiry learning. Inquiry learning says that students gain knowledge by answering research questions. So they have or they develop research questions and they answer those by performing investigations, research and do analyses on, these, on the data that they get. So basically students act as scientists. They have a question and they try to find an answer to that question by doing experiments. If we dive a little deeper, a little bit more detail in the definition, and this is from the National Research Council in the United States, we see that in inquiry learning, learning learners try to answer scientifically oriented questions. They collect evidence by actively performing experiments. And once they have those uh, experiments and they have found evidence, they try to formulate explanations from that. Very important is that they evaluate these explanations in the light of alternative explanations. So they question their data, they question their outcomes, and they try to find the best answer to their research question. And finally, once they think they have found the answer, that they communicate and justify their proposed explanations, which, as a scientist, you also do when you publish a paper in a journal and others can read it. Then you communicate and you justify it. So this is a very pithy definition of inquiry learning. And the technology to enable that, to make students, uh, to enable students to do experiments, are online laboratories. And online laboratories are laboratories, they are virtual or remote, that may replace your web or actual laboratory. And this is an example of such a laboratory. Um, it's a chemistry laboratory. And if I do start that laboratory, and you can find that on the GoLabs repository, I can do experiments here by, for example, taking these solutions, bringing them together and see that there is a, a reaction going on. In this online laboratory, I can um, finally do the, um, um, set up the equation for um, the, 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 the um, reaction that I have seen. As a teacher, I can change all the solutions that are given to students, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, this may replace an actual laboratory, but it makes it for the students much more easy to do experiments. How 
once we know that, so we know that inquiry learning and the processes that it consists of, and we know that we can use laboratories or even online laboratories for, for letting the students do investigations, then the question is how to make inquiry learning effective. Um, one thing we know for sure that if we give a laboratory, as you have just seen, just to the student, and we say, you just do your best, um, it will not work. We know that open inquiry, or as you may call it, discovery, doesn't work. And we have to give the students support in order to reach a successful inquiry process. How can we give support? Um, there's many ways, but these are the four main ways that we can give support. One, we can give students an overall strategy, or we may call it an inquiry cycle, that they can use uh, in the process of inquiry. We can give them the, 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 the right level of control. So as a teacher, you can keep control over certain aspects and give more control to the students on other aspects. We have to ensure that they have the right level of prior knowledge. And we can give them what we call scaffolds, or little apps that help them in the process. Let's go through each of those to give you an example. So if we want to give the students an overall strategy or an inquiry cycle, you've seen already the steps that are based in the, uh, that are part of the, um, of the inquiry cycle the inquiry process, and in GoLab we made what we called a GoLab inquiry cycle. It starts with an orientation phase in which students try to get an, a feeling of what's going on. Then they can design a question or a hypothesis. They do investigations by an exploration or an experimentation, and they get data that they have to make an interpretation of, and on the basis of that they draw a conclusion. And you see the final two phases of communication and reflection to the right. So giving students an overall inquiry cycle and letting them go through these processes already helps them in the inquiry process. We can give students the right level of control. Um, here you see a, a matrix where on the uh, left uh, column uh, we do have a number of things like the topic, the question, the materials, the procedures and the design, etc., which is an inquiry cycle in itself. There are many different inquiry cycles and this is an example of that. And for each of those steps in the cycle, the control can be more with the teacher or can be more with the learner. So if we have very traditional hands-on uh, in what you could call inquiry, like say in a traditional laboratory, the topic is um, determined by the teacher, the question, the procedures and the design, so students really have to follow a kind of cookbook recipe and go through all the steps. To the ultimate right, you see the student research inquiry in which the students de decide on the topic. They design the question themselves. They have to design a procedure and a design of their experiments, do the analysis and draw conclusions. And in between, there are many variations possible. And depending on the level of control of your students, you may go for one or the other level of control. But it's important that students do not get a level of control that's beyond their cap capabilities. The third one is to ensure the light, right level of prior knowledge. And basically, this is also how it works in science. As a scientist, if you do investigations or perform experiments, you do not do that out of the blue. You do prepare yourself, you read the literature, you know what to investigate, and that's also um, uh, applicable to our students. So we have to give the students the right level of prior knowledge before they go into investigations. And there are really interesting studies that show that this is the case. So, for example, there was a study by Hattie and Donoghue in 2016 that, overview, that gave an overview of all kinds of studies and programs on deep learning, for example, problem-based learning and inquiry learning, and they saw low effect sizes, which means that there was not a lot of effect of the, uh, of the intervention, if these programs, so for example, on problem-based learning and inquiry learning, are not preceded by giving students the service knowledge that they needed. And in 2017, Schneider and Preckel did an analysis that showed also over many studies that simulations, which is very close to online laboratories, are only effective if preceded by instruction of the relevant concepts. Though there is really research to back up that students need to have prior knowledge before they go into, uh, into inquiry. And finally, we can give students um, scaffolds or apps. And scaffolds or apps are modern, uh, they, they, they allow modern guided inquiry um, by giving the students a little app, a little technical solution that helps them to enable to perform a task, that enables them to perform a task that they cannot do without a scaffold. 
And these scaffolds are geared towards specific difficulties that the students experience. And the interesting thing of scaffolds is that we can start with very, very, uh, very sophisticated and, and detailed scaffolds, but we can gradually take them away. As an example, um, one of the um, scaffolds or apps you can find at Colab is the Hypothesis Scratchpad. And this is based on the finding that students often lack the domain knowledge to create interesting hypotheses, and they do not know how to formulate a testable hypothesis. And this is how the Hypothesis Scratchpad looks like. Students get conditionals and terms from the domain, and the domain terms, they provide the content that students otherwise have to design themselves, and the conditionals help them to formulate a testable hypothesis. And by dragging these terms to the open window that you see here, students can create a hypothesis that they can test. So if we give support to the students, and we do that in an appropriate and well-designed way, <coughs> can we see that inquiry uh, learning with online labs is effective? If we have an overview of the literature, we see that online labs and deep conceptual knowledge, we see that online laboratories, inquiry learning, um, if well supported, that it score, they score, students score better than on tradition than when they follow traditional expository instruction. And they score the same or better than if they follow a real laboratory. But again, only if we scaffold the students in the inquiry process. We see the same thing happening in, uh, if we look at the analysis of the PISA results from 2015. Um, the authors uh, in, the, in the bottom are the Tom, Toma and Klima. They did a reanalysis of the PISA 2015 data, where they looked at variations in guided and non-guided inquiry. And they found that inquiry learning, looking at this worldwide data from PISA, is positively associated with learning outcomes when teacher conceptual guidance is present. So really, when the teacher supported the students in the inquiry process, if they don't do that, inquiry is negatively associated with learning outcomes. So this was a brief introduction to inquiry-based learning. Um, we can spend days or weeks on uh, diving into the topic, but I think in this presentation we gave some of the more crucial and central aspects of inquiry learning, and also um, summarized how we can support students in reaching um, good results uh, in an inquiry learning process. And these scaffolds and all these results are translated in the GoLab project. So if you go to www.golabs.eu, you'll find scaffolds, you find labs, and you find all kinds of tutorials that help you design effective inquiry learning spaces. Thank you.